these, they may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I seen that. All right, Molly's game. Molly's game. Uh, you had brought this one up. I'd never seen it. I didn't know anything about it. You brought it up last time. You told me, don't look anything up. Don't uh, watch any trailers. Just watch the movie. So I did that. Just watch the movie. Yes. And I was very confused why I had to go through so much just to watch this movie. Oh, you mean by go through so much, you mean just don't do anything? I know that's <laughs> difficult. I didn't understand why there were so many rules. I didn't understand why I couldn't watch. Oh, the, there's the not rules. That's just how I like to watch movies. But this, there was nothing. <laughs> this movie didn't hold anything special to where I shouldn't have known what was coming. No, I just thought you should go into it with a clean slate. I did, and uh, the whole time I watched it, it's like, man, this really yes. feels like the Social Network. It feels like a bad version of the Social Network. And then it got to the end, and it said written or directed by Aaron Sorkin, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. that that makes sense. Why I would feel that way. So, what did you think of this movie? Uh, it was it was interesting. But it was way yeah. too long. It's two hours it was, and 20 minutes. It's like, it's two and a half hours long. It is a long movie. And uh, um, I was shocked because it could have easily shocked. been 45 minutes. Yeah, they could have cut a lot of it out. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's a cool story. Uh, so it's about this this woman who was an Olympic. She was, well, she wasn't an Skier. Olympic athlete, but she was almost going to make it to the Olympics. Ooh, ooh that's an insult. <laughs> well, He's she... saying that Olympians are not athletes. No, I don't think that's what ooh, I said at all. That is, that is harsh. I said she wasn't an Olympic athlete. Not quite Olympic level athlete. Yeah. She didn't make it to the Olympics. I feel like making it to the Olympics is the number one and only requirement to being an Olympic athlete. Now, this is probably true. But she was right on the edge of being able to do that, but got tripped up by a branch that was in the snow, fell down and landed on her head, got injured, and it kind of ended her career as a skier. Yes. Uh, Because earlier you find out that she used to have, or she had scoliosis as a kid and had all the surgery, so her spine was fused together. And so when she landed on her head, it was really Defused. Did it? Uh, I thought it said that it had jacked up what they had repaired or something like that. I don't remember that, but maybe. She, So she ends up moving to Los Angeles and is mm-hmm. working for a lawyer because she's trying to get into law school. So she wants to intern with this guy to get experience and you know just get to know people, network, and stuff like that. And he runs an illegal poker game and he's like hey i need you to contact these people make sure they're coming you know keep track of the buy-ins and all this stuff and so she starts doing that and then she starts making money from that and she starts making some decent money like a few thousand dollars every time it happens uh once in tips week. yeah in tips and so she figures out the whole system and like how it's working and gets burned by her boss who says you know what you're making too much money on tips. I'm not going to pay you for your original job. But if you quit your original job, you lose the poker job too. And he was just yeah. kind of a bitter person because she didn't want to sleep with him. Yeah, pretty much. And so he burns her and then he ends up firing her, firing her from the poker job. But she then calls everyone. She was already ready. Yeah, she calls everyone who goes to his game and sets up her own game. And uh, gives them a better With deal. George Michael Blues. Yeah. Gives them a better deal. And uh, they all jump ship, basically. They're like, you know what? Yeah, this is this is better for us. Let's not. We don't need to go back. And so she starts building an empire. And Player X, who was uh, Michael Sarah, Michael Sarah yep. was Player X. Which was kind of hard to take him serious as like this. It it was at first player. for me, uh-huh. but I guess 
once you kind of got into it, it it worked for me. Yeah, I could see it. It'd be funny if because uh, there's a bunch of actors who were in this movie as poker players, uh-huh. and she said, "Oh, I I changed everyone's identity and changed their names to keep people safe." It'd be funny if they were the actual people, and that if was the best the cover. Ones. They're just like no one would suspect it. Yeah, no one would think except for you. The guilty person would actually just pretend to be, be themselves. themselves. Yeah, it's a perfect cover up. All along, Player X was actually Michael Sarah. It is Michael Sarah. I like it. Um, but Michael Sarah is working a deal with a guy on the side, who he's he's uh, giving him money to play. And so if the guy wins, Michael Sarah gets half of his winning. If he loses, then the guy just owes him that the lo- the lost money. The whole amount. Yeah. And uh, she's like, "You can't do that. That's not fair." And he's like, "I'm not. I'm not throwing hands. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm still playing to win." And she's like, "No, it's not. You can't do this." And so he blows up her game. She ends up moving from Los Angeles to New York, and starts an even bigger game. But accidentally, with the Russians, yeah, it gets involved with the Russian mob, and the it goes from the first game or the her first game that she made herself. It was like a ten thousand dollar buy in. It ended up at the end of all of it being two hundred fifty thousand dollar buy in. Yeah, and so she was making a ton of money, and people were betting big. But if people didn't, um. If people weren't covering themselves, if they didn't actually have the money, then she was having to pay these people hundreds and thousands of dollars um, out of her own money. Out of her own money, and so she was like, Just "I don't know, what, I don't know what to do." And one of the dealers is like, "We can take a rake, which is a percentage of the pot. I think it's like one percent or something like that. I don't know. I think um, it was two percent, maybe two percent." Um, and for some reason, I didn't quite understand the law behind all this because they're like everything you're doing right now is legal there's no problem but as soon as you take a rake as soon as you take a percentage now it's illegal i think you're not allowed to profit from it but tips don't necessarily count yeah as as profit right because it's it's tips but once you take a rake then it's then you're like you're running a business essentially so you can play a high stakes poker game and it not be illegal that's fine. You can do that anywhere you want. I guess that, that's that was I, my confusion because I was like, I feel like you can't do that. Like you can't set. I up a didn't poker think that game. you could, but they they, you know, different people explicitly said like this part is not illegal. Just this part is illegal. Yeah. So I don't actually really know. Yeah. Yeah. So that I was a little confused about that, but according to the movie, she was within her right to do everything she was doing until she took the rake. But she was taking that to be able to protect in case someone didn't have the money or couldn't pay up or whatever, just because the amounts were so big, which happened uh, quite a few times. Yeah. People just didn't have the money or whatever. Um, And so all that happens, she ends up getting beat up by the Russian mob because they want to, they want to uh, take a profit or they want to take a cut of her rake basically yeah and uh she doesn't she says no that's okay i don't need any protection you're fine then the mob guy mafia guy whatever comes over and beats her up and this was it was violent um oh yeah for sure there's a big old guy punching this not little but the small much smaller than he was woman all around her apartment slamming her head in the walls putting a gun in her mouth and she's like it wasn't an offer. You have to do this or else. And uh, he leaves. She stays in an apartment for two weeks and then finds out at the end of the two weeks because she's letting her face heal up. At the end of the two weeks, the mafia got uh, indicted by the FBI uh, somewhere halfway through. Yeah. Uh, the two weeks. So she's like, okay, well, I just need to get – I need to get – all my money that I'm owed or I, I just need to get even. I need to settle all my debts and get all the money back and all this stuff. And then I'm out. I'm done. This is not worth it anymore. It's getting too dangerous. And uh, she does that. And then the FBI comes after the game, 
comes after her and then indicts her on a RICO charge, which is um, a way to take out a crime organization. You mm-hmm. can you can convict one person within that organization, and everyone else is um, uh, accountable as well. And so she right. was involved with the mafia in this RICO case, and Idris Eldris, how do you say his name? Idris. I think it's Idris. Idris. Idris, Idris Alba was a lawyer who was really good. Uh, and she goes to him and is like, hey, I need your help. And he's like, well, how are you going to pay me? You don't have any money because it's the government took all our money. It was like $5 million. Yeah. I think it was – was it – I thought it was like 12. I think I think they said you'll get – Oh, no, yeah, no. Sorry. She said she had 12 on the street. Yeah. And she had like $2.5 million that the, they had seized. Yeah. I think it was five. Okay, fine. Well, because they say five when they talk about you'll get all your money back plus interest, so you'll walk away okay. with five million dollars. So it was somewhere around there. Um, so she's like, "I don't have money right now, but I will have money, and I will pay you back." And he's like, "Well, I'll, I'll help you for now, but I'm not really going to get involved uh, beyond this first thing where you plead guilty or whatever." Her sentencing. Her sentencing. Or her indictment arraignment i think it's called arraignment that's what it is um so he goes to that and then he has a change of heart and find out because it was his daughter who read her book and all this stuff and it's not really that important to the story but he ends up deciding to help her she she has all this dirt and all this information on celebrities and politicians and musicians and all just rich people but she's not willing to give it up because she wants to protect her name. She wants to keep her name, you know, um, clean, clean, proper. valuable, whatever. <laughs> like she, she's like, that's all I have. I can't, I can't sell my name because then I will have nothing left and decides to plead guilty to the case. The yep. judge talks to the lawyers and the, he tells the lawyers like, There's, why, what's the point of this? What are we doing? And he says, you know, I see what you did. You know, you, you shouldn't have done it, but you really don't need to go to prison for this. It's not going to better the community. Like you yeah. were, you were following the law until you weren't. And the reason you weren't was just so you could continue doing it as well as you could. Uh, we don't need to, th- this, this is done. You're, you're free to go 200 days or 200 hours community service, a fine of $200,000, and that's it. You're good. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much the whole story. It's a it's a true so, story. So I had a question because now I, I don't recall. Um, initially, they offered her a deal yes. where she gives up names or whatever it was. The hard drive. And then she the hard drive. Mm-hmm. And then she has to serve no prison time and gets all of her money back plus interest. Right. Yep. She. Initially, so she doesn't take that deal and says she pleads guilty, yes. but then she gets off anyways. Does mm-hmm. she get her money back, or do they get to keep that money? They didn't say. I don't think she got her money back. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, she. They did say she was gonna have to pay taxes on that money to get it back. But they never oh, said really? if she was gonna get it all back or not. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So, what do you think of this movie? I assumed you liked it because you. Yeah, I liked it. It just made me want to play poker. <laughs> High stakes, twenty dollar buy-in. <laughs> this didn't make me want to play poker. No. No, I didn't think the poker was that great in this movie. Um, I thought it was okay the way that they showed different things and different like situations happening and like yeah. the one, I, the one where she was afraid of not being able to cover and it was like that guy it, he got like the one thing that would have won and he won all, I don't it's a horrible explanation but you know what I'm talking about yeah so we used to play cards at my house every yeah. Friday for free no money there was no money involved <laughs> it was a five a five dollars uh, buy-in I believe yeah. but I, yeah um, but I there was one hand that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Oh boy. And you were involved. Of course I was. 
So we were playing Texas Hold'em, which is what they were playing uh-huh. in this game. And uh, there was me, and you were sitting next to me, and then there was, I think, four other people. So there were six of us. Mm-hmm. And I got dealt two aces. And so I'm like, all right, this is a decent hand. Like, let's see where this goes. Right. Generally, if you get two aces, you if you don't get everyone out on the uh, before the flop, you really don't have that great of a chance of winning. Um, people will get two pair, or, you know, get other hands that will just outdo you is generally what happens. Twaster just looks really good, but it's not as good as it looks. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's not bad. It's I mean, it's the best no. starting hand, but it really it's it, it doesn't always win. You know, that's. Um, but so I, I had it and I was like, all right, well, let's see how this goes. And I, I bet, I think I bet a little big. It wasn't nothing crazy. And, uh, the flop comes out That's like 75 cents. The flop comes out and it, there's two more aces. So now I have four aces and you as dramatic as you can go. Ugh! And everyone was like, what? Because you had folded before the flop. You're like, I had an ace. And everyone, are you, <laughs> I think you said you had a pair of aces. And I was like, what is he talking about? Yeah. And everyone else was like, oh, really? And so they all started betting big. And I was like, all right, thank you, Taylor. And so I just followed along. And uh, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Briar Vaughn or someone. But there, there's two other people who were like kind of, battling with each other and so i just i was like all right i'll just follow 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 until the last round of betting and i just went all in and i think i took two people out and then i showed you know i had four aces and everybody was mad at you and you're like oh that yeah. was the hand before <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember that oh it was so funny it was it was great you're welcome and i'm still waiting for my cut of that pot <laughs> yeah that, it was probably like three dollars yeah, well, whenever you want to get it to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love playing poker. I didn't feel like this movie really showcased poker. They showcased people sitting at a table much more. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not Rain Man. I mean, I guess that's not really a poker showcase either. <laughs> <laughs> so never mind. <laughs> uh, it's not Maverick, which is an episode we have coming out soon. It's not 21. It's nothing like that. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Aaron Sorkin? Do you like him? Um, from what I've seen, I know he's done this. He did, like you said, the social network, but I'm not, I don't know if I'm super familiar with the rest of his stuff. I'm trying to remember. I I believe he did the West Wing. I'm pretty sure it was him. Oh no, he did the West Wing and he did another show called Newsroom, Newsroom. but I never watched that. I'm, but as far as movies go, there was one that I don't remember. Hold on. Um, but I mean, I think he's good. <laughs> I uh, I don't really like his style. Similar to no? uh, Shane Black when we were talking about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He, uh, everyone talks like he does, at least the way he yeah. writes. And so everyone is very fast paced when they're talking. And nobody's yeah. having a problem keeping up. Everyone's like really quick, really quick, really quick, really quick. And it's kind of exhausting to then listen maybe to. you need to get on his level. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, he did the movie Moneyball. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. That feels like an Aaron Sorkin movie. That's okay, yeah. Um, but he does these dramas that are solely dialogue-based. There's like no yeah. action, really. Um, it's all dialogue. Yeah. And uh this one had a little bit of stuff going on, but really I don't know, not not a ton. No, but not all movie needs to be uh the Expendables three, Alan. <laughs> oh. your favorite movie. They can't all be saving Christmas. What are you playing with? It's a toy, alright? Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's so loud. <laughs> I uh on one of our episodes that's coming out, I just edited. Uh, there was a time when you were eating popcorn in the middle of the episode, and I almost <laughs> cut it out. I was like, I should just cut this out. This is bad. Hearing you chewing, hearing me yell at you, <laughs> hearing you say, "Are we popcorn? What do you care?" 
was like, you know what? People, people need to know the truth. People need to see what you're actually like. I don't. I shouldn't try to hide your your ridiculousness anymore. I'll just let it all oh, hang out there. So so ridiculous of me to eat popcorn <laughs> on on a podcast on a mic. You're sitting there chomping on popcorn while you're talking. Look, I turned my head away every time I was chewing. Okay, I didn't realize how much you could hear. <laughs> it was bad. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, anything else about Molly's game? Um, no, that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, I liked it though. Yeah, it was good. It's, I think Aaron Sorkin has an ability to trick you into thinking his movies are better than they actually are. Oh, so I'm a sheep now. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I, I think you watch it and it, the dialogue is so quick that you're like, you're, you're really paying attention to what's being said. But then when you go and think back about it, you're like, it's not, it wasn't really that good. There wasn't really that much being said. They just kind of talked at each other a lot. But if you only watch it one time and he can trick you into thinking that it was good, then isn't that How him he, doing a good job? What he did his whole career? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying that he's not successful or that he didn't do a good job. It's just I when I think about this movie, I just. You're just saying that you could do it better. Okay. Well, watching it, I felt like, oh wow, we must it must be coming to an end. So much feels like it's happened already. Yeah. And then I looked, and it was only thirty minutes into the two and a half hour long movie. I was like, what? <laughs> and then it just drug on for so long after that. It's just like it, it felt fast, but it moved slow. And that's not a yeah. trait you want to have in a movie. That's the only trait I look for in a movie. You want it to feel fast, but not, not be. To I like, want it to be. Yeah, exactly. It felt like it took me all day to watch, and I didn't stop it. Like I just watched it straight through, <laughs> and it felt like it took forever to get through. Well, see, here's here's the biggest trick. This mm. is a nine hour movie. Oh. But it's it. If you watch the, the the timer, it says it's only two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah. And that is good directing. <laughs> I don't think that's directing at all. That is good film editing. I think it's just manipulating. That is good manipulating. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll give you that. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It's fine. Like I, I didn't, I'm not like annoyed that I watched it or anything like that, but I, it was just one of those like, all right, that, that was a movie. I, I'll never that watch it again. Yeah. I probably won't watch it again. Um, you've only seen it the once, right? Yep. But uh, that'll yeah. probably be it. I mean, it's based on a true story, which is cool. Like, yeah, her life is super interesting. Uh, the movie is just too long. Like, oh, you know, I, that's what I was gonna say. What'd you think of Kevin Costner? Oh, I like him. He's, I mean, he wasn't in it a ton, and he was mostly grumpy. No, he wasn't uh, when he was yeah. in it. Like. Do better. Try harder. Get up. Don't cry. That type of stuff. Um, stand straight. Stand straight. Uh, it's not nice to say someone with scoliosis. <laughs> That's why he was so grumpy. <laughs> um, yeah, his arc was kind of strange. I mean, I, I, I assume it's all reality based, but it was about he. She's like, why? Why did you always like my brothers better than me? And he says, well because you always knew that I was cheating on your wife or on my wife, your mom. She's like, no, I didn't. I didn't find out until I was 20. And he's like, you, you caught me when I was, you were five. Yeah. I was like, oh, this, this is weird. It's yeah. You know, like I assume. Can you imagine how many people out there know, but don't know that their parents were cheating on each other when they were kids and it just was repressed. Like that saw it or were around when it was happening. There's probably a lot. Yeah, but but don't actually know it or you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, her, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's a ton of people who are like, "Oh, my kid's dumb. He won't notice anything." Nice. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I had no follow up to that. <laughs> all right. Well, that's always the best way to bring something up. Um, nice. But yeah, so watch it if you want. 
if you like the social network, if you like Aaron Sorkin, you'll probably like this one. It feels very much in line with all that other stuff. I'm not the yeah. biggest Aaron Sorkin fan, so. Uh, this but are movie. you the smallest Aaron Sorkin fan? Um, maybe a little bit bigger than the smallest, like fourth smallest. Okay, that sounds right. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so you might like it if you like his other stuff, but it, you won't miss anything if you don't watch it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Icing That Pod, like us on Facebook, and uh, go check out our sponsors, Boss Play. They're an escape room out in Oceanside, California. They have a website, uh, boss play.com, and we will be back uh, in a couple days. Woo woo!